Hello, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Saturday, January 20th, 2007, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some stocks for trading this uh, coming week. The first stock we'll look at is called Align Technology, symbol ALGN. We looked at this one, I think, about a week and a half ago and did catch a, uh, a, a slight bounce in it. But it looks like it's ready to go again here. If we just take a look at this daily time frame, we can see that if the stock did clear some resistance right in here, which now looks like it's acting as support right about that um, 14 and a 30 or so. And um, looking at the weekly time frame, you can see that after this big rally, the, the gains have been consolidated very nice here on decreasing volume. We saw uh, two weeks ago an increase in volume as it did pop up above that resistance I just noted about 14.30. So it looks like this stock could be getting ready to go uh, higher once again. And our target is going to be $15.50 a share, uh, just above where we had this prior peak at about 15.35. So the way I'd like to see this one uh, play out would be just a straight buy on strength above $14.47. That's the high of the last two days. If we can get above there, I think we could make a, a, a purchase of the stock and put our stop uh, just at 14.21 below these lows of the last two days. So we've got the stock trading in a narrow range here, and if it can get above 14.47, we would then uh, put our stop at 14.21. That'd be 26 cents of risk for an objective of 15 and a half. Uh, our price target would be a dollar three away. So 26 cents of risk for the potential to make a dollar three in shares of ALGN. COSI is the symbol for Cozy Incorporated. I have no clue what these guys do, um, but this is a nice longer term. Uh, bottom in here, it looks like on the uh, daily time frame, you can see that we had some resistance uh, just below the $6 level, and it just recently broke above there. We've got the 10-day moving average above the 20, above the 50, and now it looks like that level of resistance could be finding support also right at the rising 10-day moving average. Now, you'll see that we've also got this declining 200-day moving average that might be... Um, you know, just get testing it and, and getting ready to break higher. But if we look at the weekly time frame, here's what it looks like. A nice longer term uh, bottom in here, nice tight range. So we've got a nice break out there. And I, I, eventually, I think the stock can probably make it up towards about uh, 7 and a half to $8 a share. Our initial target, though, is going to be $7 a share. I want to keep it a little more conservative. So we'll look for it to move up to $7 a share. And the way I'd like to see this one play out would be just a little bit further uh, pullback. Let's say down to $5.90. And then to buy it above Friday's high of 607. So first a little bit of a pullback, then a move above Friday's high. We would then put our stop at $5.85. So that would give us a risk in this case of $0.22. Cents. And with our target up at 7 bucks a share, we would be risking 22 cents, ideally uh, to, to make 93 cents if it does work out uh, as anticipated. FMCN is the symbol for Focus Media. I believe this is a Chinese-based company, um, but they came public, it looks like, back in about 2005. Had a real nice rally uh, from these, you know, low, just below 20 up to the, the 60s and consolidated in there and just started getting going uh, once again back in November with this breakout. It then tested the uh, prior highs from last year and again another breakout in here. So on this daily time frame we can see that a nice stair step pattern higher where prior levels of resistance are acting as support here. This prior level of resistance acting as support in here and then the highs from late last year acting as support on the recent pullback. So in order to buy this stock, I'd, uh, it looks like it got going pretty good on Friday. So I'd like to see it pull back a little bit first. In fact, I'd like to see it pull back to about $75.20. So that'd be just about a 90 cent pullback. So pull back to $75.20, then look for st uh, a buy on strength above $75.35. And our stop would then go at $74.70. So that would give us a risk of $0.65. Cents. But the upward target, I think, and I think this target is pretty conservative, is right up around $78.50. Ideally, I think it could probably go out and make a new high. But we'll just call our target $78.50. So that would give us $0.65 cents of risk for the opportunity, hopefully in this case, to make about $3.15. 
Now, oil has obviously been in a, a severe downtrend the last uh, three weeks, uh, you know, since the beginning of this year and, and, and late into last year. Oil, uh, the U.S. Oil uh, Trust Fund, or whatever you want to call it, the USO, um, which doesn't mirror the price of a barrel, but does mirror the percentage movements is uh, the way I understand it. But we've seen this sell-off come on massive volume in here. On Thursday, we had bad news, and th the bad news was that the uh, oil inventories had increased. So that's technically or fundamentally bearish for the price of oil, more supply, uh, obviously. So, uh, But it comes at the end of this big sell-off here. And a lot of times you see this big increasing volume. The big volume peaks typically at these turning points. Big volume peaks with emotion. Big volume tends to peak with news releases. And I think that once you have the news come out, a lot of times there's a contrary trade to look for. We looked for this trade on Thursday. It didn't develop. Um, I wasn't aware that news had come out. Um, but it does look like a high-risk trade. It's against the primary trend. A lot of people have been emailing me, asking me where I think the bottom in oil is, and I've been reluctant to uh, talk about it all year until last week. But now I think that if you are uh, comfortable trading against the primary trend, because the primary trend is lower here, so you're, the odds are against you, trade your smaller position size, here's what I'd like to see happen. I'd like to see uh, this USO pull back to the five-day moving average. I'd like to see it get down to $43.80 and then to buy the stock above $44.10. So I want to see it pull back and then buyers to come back in, get it above $44.10. Realistically, there's some resistance right around that $44.5 level it's going to need to get through. But I think if it pulls back and then rallies again, it's going to find the strength to do that. And then to push this up, up to a minimum of 45 and a half. Now, as far as a risk reward ratio goes, that would be, um, and I, I think I failed to mention the stop, the stop would go at $44.78. So, I'm sorry, $43.78. So that would give us 32 cents of risk and the opportunity to make a dollar 40. That's the initial target. Realistically, I think it'd probably make it up a little bit higher, but I want to be conservative. So we'll say we're looking for a dollar forty of upside with just thirty-two cents of risk in USO. Um, last week we got stopped out of eBay with a small profit, about forty cents, I guess. But eBay still looks like the stock ought to continue lower here. We've got the 10, 20, 50, 200 day moving average, they're all declining. And that tells me that the big money is moving out of this stock once again. Looking at the weekly time frame, it, it, it looks like maybe the stock is due for a test uh, down towards this level here at about 28.50. So I think it continues a little bit lower here. And in order to short this stock, what I'd like to see happen first, it did sell off pretty hard, you know, about 40 cents at the end of the day on Friday here. So what I'd like to see happen would be a rally first up to $29.85. Once it does that, then be on the alert for weakness and sell it short below $29.65. Our stop would then go at 30.05, so that would give us 40 cents of uh, risk. And I think if it gets down to 28.50, that would give us a target of $1.15 away. So the question is, would you risk 40 cents shorting eBay for the opportunity to make $1.15?